15 tips for when you're animating titles in DaVinci Resolve. Tip number one. This tip is something that I implemented in my workflow, which is using an actual transform node to animate the position of your text instead of the actual text you know, layout settings. Now, why would you do this? This is to keep things more organized and easier to find. That way you don't have to actually go back to the text node and have to go and scroll through the different tabs to find the actual element that you want to edit in the different tabs that you have there because it does have a lot of tabs. Now that's tip number one. Use a separate transform node to animate the position and movement of your title. Tip number two, shading elements. You can add a little bit more styling to your text by using the shading elements. You can find these right here in the text node and here you can see that you can add a border or a shadow or a resizable box that you can later on also animate. Tip number three, add more elements to your animation. This could be lines, shapes, or pretty much anything that comes to mind. For example, we can create a line here with a polygon mask and we can animate the length and its position so that it also moves when the text is moving. Now you might have noticed that I created the line in the center of the screen and then I actually use the inspector position values to move it where I wanted it to go. Now that's tip number four. Create your elements at the center of the screen and you can use the guides in Fusion by pressing Ctrl G so that you can know where the center is. That way you can use the center values or the position values in the inspector and put it where you want it to be more easily. Tip number five, which is use instances to replicate elements. Now let's use this line that we just created. To create an instance, what we have to do is press Ctrl C or Command C on Mac, and then you wanna press Ctrl Shift V with it selected, and that's gonna paste an instance of that element. Whatever node you select when you copy, then that's gonna create an instance of that. Since this is an instance, everything that you see here in green is gonna be affected to both nodes or three or however many instances you have if you change them. If you only wanna change the position, we can actually right click here and de-instance the position. That way we can move the line and put these on the other side or anywhere else on your screen. And the same applies to any other value. Now, when you don't wanna use an instance is when you have an element and you wanna have a different timing of it. If you adjust the timing or the keyframes in one of them when there's an instance then both of them are going to change so if you want the elements to be animated in different times you're not gonna use an instance but just a normal copy of the element okay so let's jump into the tip number six use a grid node to position your text or elements more accurately when we press ctrl g we only have the center basically then there's a lot of things where we have to sort of get so you can use a grid node to help you position the elements exactly where you want them to be so that everything is symmetrical and in the right place. And after you have done setting them up, all you have to do is disconnect that grid node and you're ready to go. So far, what we have is a linear animation of our line and our text. That brings us to tip number seven, using splines to make your animations more dynamic. What does this mean? When we go to the spline editor, we can actually change the movement or the animation type from linear to pretty much anything that we want. If you have many nodes, you can actually select all of them and then edit them all at the same time by adding the same spline values to each of them. But if you want, you can also do this individually. When we select the line right here, as you can see it's linear, if we press F, that's gonna basically add an ease in and ease out options. Now you can press T right here with this selected that's going to open the ace in and ease out value tool. Let's call it tool. Here you can adjust how much of ease in or ease out you want this curve to have. But if you want to be a little bit more creative, you can actually manually adjust the curve by just dragging these around. And you can also hold control if you only want one side of the curves to move. Now for the next tip, tip number eight, add motion blur to your animated elements. Motion blur is a matter of personal preference. So if you want, you can add these to your text or elements, but if you don't want to, you don't have to. You can leave the text or your animation as is. Now, I personally like to use these at around 30 or 80 in the shutter speed. And I usually like to leave the quality at four or six, but if you have a strong computer, then you can increase this as much as you want. And you can also play around with the other values. And that brings us to the next tip, which is tip number nine. Tip number nine is linking elements to make your life easier. 
In this case, we're going to use a motion blur because we were just working with that one in the previous tip. So if you have many elements, go in and activating motion blurs on each of those elements and playing around with the different values can become really tiring, especially if you have like five or 10 different elements on your animation. The easiest thing to do is right when you're starting the second element you want, you can select a, let's call this main control element. On this element is where you're gonna link all the motion blurs to. And we're gonna have to do this one time. We're gonna right click and add an expression and then connect each of these elements to the motion blur in these node that we have selected. After you've done here, the more elements you have, all you have to do now is copy that node where that you first linked to the main control, let's call this. And we're just gonna go and right click and paste the settings in the motion blur section of every element that we have here. This is gonna make your life easier because now every time you make a change right here, all those other elements are gonna also change the values and you don't have to repeat the whole process for each of those animated elements. Now tip number 10, add a general position node at the end. What does this mean? After your whole animation is done, sometimes you might want to be able to adjust where the actual ending position of the title is. For that, simply add another transform node after everything right before your media out. That way you can later on use that as a general position. You can also do this by moving or adjusting the values in the settings here in the edit page. But if you want to keep things a little bit more organized, it will be a little bit easier if you just use another transform node here in Fusion and then do it directly from there. Now, the next tip is a little bit more intermediate or advanced. So tip number 11, after you have your intro animation of your text done, sometimes you want the outro to be just exactly the same as the intro, but in reverse. Now you can use a time stretcher node to do this. And the way that this works is that you're gonna use a time stretcher at the end and we're gonna animate the timing basically by setting up the keyframe zero at zero and then we're gonna go all the way until the last keyframe of the intro and we're gonna create a keyframe on the time stretcher with that keyframe. Now we're gonna go all the way to the end and if our animation had 48 keyframes, we're gonna just go and do the final length and subtract 48 from that. There we're gonna create a keyframe again at the same value, let's say 48 on our time stretcher, and we're gonna go all the way till the end and we're gonna bring that back to zero and create that keyframe. That way, when there's 48 frames left on the fusion composition, the animation will start over, but in reverse, and that way you have your outro animation. Now, tip number 12 is a little bit related to these, which is the keyframe stretcher. Basically, how the keyframe stretcher works is that whatever the values that you put right here, in this case, we're going to put these numbers right here, and anything that's within that segment is actually going to be stretched if we go back to the edit page and LinkedIn of Fusion Composition. So this works when you want to have a title that you can adjust the duration. Let's say when you created these, it was only a five second composition, and you want this title to be for 10 seconds. Using the keyframe stretcher, now we can just go back to the edit page and adjust the timing here to 10 seconds and then you'll still have that intro and then the outro without having to move all the keyframes again. Since we're now in the edit page, let me just show you a couple of things. If you don't want to use Fusion or if you're scared of Fusion, if you don't like it as much, you can still create some animations in the edit page. All you have to do now is use the transitions that you can find in the effects tab and you can add that to a text splash node and use that to move your text. You can mix this with a slide transition or a push transition and you can also add, adjust the opacity of your text. That way it's going to sort of like slide up and show up from nowhere if you don't want it to come from off screen. You can use pre-made transition or the default transitions or you can use pretty much any transition that you have downloaded from, from asset creators. Now what happens if you, if you have this text right here and you want to reuse this? Tip number 14. Let's say you like this title that you had just made here and you want to reuse this on another project. Now, since we're not in Fusion, we cannot really create a macro from this exact one. And there's a simpler and easier way to save this. First, if you use a transition, you can right click on this transition and save this as a preset. 
Now you can go to the effects tab and then you will be able to find this transition in under the user presets section. Now we have saved this transition. What about this text plus? We can grab this text plus and if you have made any animations here in the edit page, as you can see here, there's keyframes that you can also animate here. If you have made any animations here, now you can drag this into your media folder and then rename these and then save it there. Or you can also go and drag this into your power beans. That way you can find that text plus node there and use it on your other projects. Now tip number 15 is not exactly related to animation, but it also is. And that is where sound effects come to play. Whenever there's a visual and there's a little bit of a sound mixed with it, the look and the experience of seeing that is a lot better for some reason, just how it works. Now it's pretty easy to add a sound effect here. You just have to make sure that it's subtle enough and that it goes well with the type of animation that your text has. For example, if the text is just jumping out, then a little bit of a, like a pop or a bubble sound can work well. If it's sliding, then a whoosh or something like that works better. Now, what if you don't have any library of sound effects? There's actually free libraries of sound effects that you can find. This could be Pixabay. You can find the YouTube library of sound effects. And I think even Facebook has a library of sound effects that you can use on your video. So there's plenty of free resources where you can find sound effects to use with your title animation. If you enjoyed this video, you can leave a like. And if you learned something new, let me know down in the comments. Or if there's anything that I missed and that you want to share with others, then you can also comment down below in the video. That way more people can know and just share knowledge with everybody. So yeah, that is it for this video. I hope you found it useful and I will see you in the next video. Kieran Swabi.